KC2IRV here again, and uh, I have a very short video, hopefully very short, we'll find out, on another little project I want to undertake. A uh, quick synopsis, um, due to the discovery of the Leo Bodner uh, GPS unit that can, you know, uh, be programmable for just about any frequency from... I think it's like 450 kilohertz up to 800 megahertz. I want to experiment simulcasting some Max tracks by programming the Leo Bodner GPS unit to act as the reference oscillator in a Max track. And now in a Max track, the reference oscillator is 14.4 um, megahertz, and it uses this little crystal here. If I can focus on it, oh, better do that. There we go. Which I've removed. Which the reason why I removed this because I thought I was going to inject it right where this crystal is. And uh, I decided not to do that due to the amplifiers and a bunch of other stuff. So, what I wound up doing is I bypassed the amplifiers. There's a couple of transistor amplifiers and stuff like that. And there's a coil. It's L. In this particular model VHF Max Track, this is a VHF two channel Max Track. This L151, let me get some better light on this with my lamp. This isn't working very well, but eh, that'll work well enough. It's L151, and I took a piece of RG316, and I soldered it to the one side of L151. The other side goes to pin 1 of the synthesizer IC, which is right there, which is U101. And the, it, the synthesizer I see is a, uh, uh, let's say, a 16-pin chip, and it goes right to pin number one um, for the 14.4 megahertz reference. So, like I said, I just took a piece of RG316, and I have, I put a BNC connector on the end of it. And what I'm doing, to just quick, cheap, and dirty test, is my little IFR 500 a 500A, I uh, have it generating 14.4 megahertz with no, um, obviously no um, modulation, and injected it here. Oddly enough, I found out in order to get this thing, the synthesizer, to, to function, I have to have my gen on this all the way up, which at that is around 110 uh, millivolts peak to peak. So, which isn't a whole lot of drive. Uh, I could probably have driven it with a lot less if I went in through the amplifier stages, but I don't think there's any need, especially with the Leo Bodner device, which can output a lot more level than that. So, as you can see, I have the unit powered up. And, uh... Lighting here is a challenge. It does it does transmit. So so the uh, the receive or the transmit is locked on frequency. Um, or I should say the phase the, the 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 synthesizer is locked. So it will transmit and generate the program frequency. When, right now I have it at 155.1 and if I take if I take the BNC connector out you can tell it no longer transmits because it no longer has a reference. So it does, it does work. And the other thing you can see is right now it transmits. But if I turn this down even a hair like that, nothing. So it seems the minimum to get this going is 110 millivolts peak to peak. Um, so once I get the Leo Bodner device, the GPS unit. I will connect this directly. I will connect this BNC directly to the unit, and then I will look at the output and see how uh, uh, how well that actually works. Um, and then I can take a pair of these. These are the cheaper ones, the cheaper Max Track, or cheaper or less sophisticated. It doesn't have the 16-pin connector. I actually removed the five-pin connector that used to be on it, and I'll. I'll put out, I'll take an interface cable at the back. Um, and then we can uh, 
take a pair of these and see if they simulcast. And it won't uh, won't be hard to test. So um, that's all for now. Once I get the Leo Bodner unit, which you know depends on funds, um, costs about two hundred bucks a U.S. to to get. It doesn't include shipping, I don't think. So once I have that in my hands, we'll uh, make a video of that and see how it works. 73s, catch you later.